In this video, I'm going to show you a very good power failure lighting circuit. Now, the circuit you're looking at is fully automatic. I put this together. It's been in use where I live for about two months. It's plugged in 24 hours a day, and it works flawlessly. So I decided to put this circuit online. Now, where I live, every so often, the power does go out. Now, if the electric goes off at night, usually it will only be off for half an hour to an hour at the max. And I may not want to go through the trouble of connecting my generator up because my computer is on a battery backup for at least two hours. The only thing I would really want at night, if it's only going to be off for a half an hour to an hour, would be lighting. And this circuit here is perfect. Now what you're going to need is a 500 milliamp 12 volt power supply, which would be a wall transformer. Now in this case, I'm using a 120 volt stepping down to 12 volt. If your location uses 220 volts, then you would use a 220 down to 12 volt step down transformer. Make sure you use one that's rated around 500 milliamps. Now it's also important that you do not use a regulated 12 volt output. You want a regular transformer that's going to have a higher open circuit voltage, maybe around 18 to 20 until the load is applied and then it will drop down to 12 supplying a half of an amp if you needed it. So you want to make sure you use the proper transformer. The circuit works pretty simple. As long as the power supply is plugged into the electrical receptacle through this Zener regulator circuit which is a 100 ohm resistor with a 12 volt 1 watt. The reason for this, the open circuit voltage will be much higher than 12 and you want to keep it at a fairly stable 12 volts going into that 12 volt relay coil. The relay being used here is a 12 volt 50 milliamp coil. In my case I use a 5 amp relay contact coil. You could use up to a 10. Just as long as you keep the coil current fairly low everything will be just fine. You also have a back EMF diode which is a 1N4007 across the relay coil. As long as power is being detected from the wall receptacle this relay will be energized, keeping the common and the normally open connected. Once the power failure is detected, it will go back to the common and normally closed, which would allow current to flow from the battery into your lights to ground. Now, when the power is applied and your lighting is off because the relay coil is being powered, keeping the light off, at the same time, your 12 volt battery which could be a lead acid battery, a sealed lead acid battery, or you can have 10 high capacity D cell nickel cadmium batteries in series to create the 12 volts that you need. That is going to be constantly charged through this LM317T circuit. What you're going to have happen, in my case, the way I have this set up, approximately a quarter to a third of an amp of current is being supplied to the battery to keep it charged. Now the way this charging circuit works, it's a taper charge circuit. When the battery's voltage is down to say 10, 10 and a half to 12 volts, you're going to have the highest level of charging current, which in my case is between 250 milliamps and one third of an amp. That current will be applied as the voltage slowly rises up to a maximum voltage of 13.75 the current will gradually taper off to the point where it meets the 1375 and then there's no more charging that's going to take place. So it's more or less a taper charging circuit. Now you want to make sure that it is set at 13.75. Now when it leaves this point right here it will be 1375 roughly or very close to it if you use a 240 ohm resistor and a 2.4 K like you see here. The 0.33 is what regulates the amount of current flowing in. That allows my one quarter to a third of an amp. And by using this resistor, it also allows the battery to charge a little better as it nears that 13.75 cutoff. It's probably best if you left a 240 ohm resistor, a fixed resistor in this position here, 
and a 1.5k fixed resistor here in series with a 1k potentiometer. Once you have those two in series, you can adjust your voltage output from here to here to 13.75. Now because it's going to be flowing through the shot key diode, a 1N5817 to a 5819, those will be fine. This will reduce the voltage by maybe 0.15 to 0.2 volts. So you're going to want to adjust the potentiometer here to get the output to be around 13.9 to maybe 14 volts. So when it flows through, you'll have a little bit of that voltage drop and you'll end up with a 1385 or a 1375. Once it gets to the point right here with that 1385, it then flows through a 2 amp fuse into the positive of your sealed lead acid battery, 12 volt lead acid battery, or you can use 10 high capacity nickel cadmium D cells in series. The negative here goes to ground. Now in a previous video I showed you an under voltage and over voltage cutoff circuit for a 12 volt battery. What I did right in this point here between the junction with that dot and the junction with this dot. I cut that right there and I took that circuit and I connected the common relay contact right here and then the other relay contact. I'm not sure if I use a normally open or normally closed. You'll have to refer to that video and I connected it to here. Then I took the power supply from the circuit and I connected it to the positive and negative of the battery. What it will do is it will monitor the voltage of the battery. If it gets too low, it will disconnect the lighting to protect the battery against over discharge. From this point right here after the battery, it goes into an NPN transistor. I use a 2222A. The emitter has a 10K to ground. The base goes over to a voltage divider setup. I have a 36K to ground and then a 100 ohm connecting into a LDR, a light dependent resistor, which goes to the collector. The one I use in bright light goes to a few hundred ohms and in total darkness it goes to two to three million ohms. So that's the range of this one. Right between the 10K resistor and the emitter, that goes off to point A. Point A connects over to here where it feeds through a 1N4001 diode to the top of the relay coil. The purpose of this portion of the circuit is if the electricity goes out and it's daylight hours, you do not want your lighting to come on. You want to conserve your battery and you do not want the lights active. I only want my lights to activate if it's nighttime and that's the purpose of this circuit. So as long as the power is on, the relay contacts will be opened, keeping your lighting off your batteries will be charging and everything will be just fine as soon as the power goes off and if it's dark out the battery will supply power to the lights in the event the voltage drops too low of the battery if you have a very long duration power failure once it drops to 10.3 to 10.5 if you connected up the under voltage circuit from a previous video it will disconnect power preventing further discharge of this 12 volt battery. If you want more current to charge your battery, you would reduce this value from 0.33 maybe to 0.2. That might give you 400 milliamps. Make sure you use a very large heat sink with thermal compound on your 317T. It's a really simple circuit. It works outstanding. And what I'm going to do now is show you how I have mine set up. This is the way I have my circuit set up. I don't have a dedicated 12 volt battery for powering my lights. So I'm using this heavy duty Marine Group 27 battery, which is on my inverter generator. The good thing about using the battery on my inverter generator is that the battery will always be maintained at a high voltage level. In this case, around 13.8. I also use these blade connectors so if I do decide to use my inverter generator and I want to just disconnect it from the lighting inside the house I would slide these blades apart take this cable secure it out of the way over here on this cable with this velcro strap place the wire underneath pull it over secure it 
and then I can wheel my generator off and it's no longer connected to the circuit. Now I use this Radio Shack housing. I think it was around four dollars. On the side I have this holder here The wire from the battery goes directly into this unit and then to this fuse first. So that's important to have. Put that back. Now the circuit is plugged in. Right over there behind that trash can. See the white extension cord going into the power pack on the floor. It's a 500 milliamp 12 volt. That is what is charging the battery right now and keeping the lighting inside off. Now in the event of a power failure, this circuit right here will turn on these ultra bright Piranha LEDs to light up the area in the garage so I can see what's going on. I have a compact fluorescent light that is driven by a 12 volt circuit. I have a video for that which I recently released which shows you how to make a fluorescent tube drive circuit. So I have that compact fluorescent light which will light up a very large room. And I also have an LED light in the bathroom. So I have the garage, the main part of the house, and a bathroom, all with automatic lighting in the event of a power failure. This wire you see right here is a 16 gauge copper wire. It has a couple of bullet connectors on top. This will separate if I want to pull it apart. So everything actually separates really easy off of the main unit. This just feeds into the wall, up into the attic, and over to all the lighting. I can show you what the inside of this box looks like right now. Now if you look over here, you can see the wires coming down from the bottom of the box. That is the power supply wire coming from the wall transformer and then the other wire goes to the photo cell mounted outside on the wall, which I'll show you right now. Now as you can see here, I drilled a very small hole through the garage wall and through the siding outside. I then placed the LDR or the photo cell flush with the siding. By placing the photo cell outside like this, it will allow the circuit to properly trigger on and off. What I'm going to do now is simulate a power failure by simply unplugging the cord from the electrical receptacle. When that happens, it's instantaneous. This light will come on, as well as the one in the main part of the house and the bathroom. Unplug this. You can see the light is now on. It's a very bright LED light to kill off some of the glare. I diffuse the light a little by taking some sandpaper and roughing up the clear lenses on the LEDs. I will now show you the compact fluorescent light which is also on at the same time and the other LED light. Now as you can see here I decided to use a compact fluorescent light for the main part of the house due to the exceptional light output of these bulbs. Now because I'm using only 12 volts instead of 120 what I did is I removed the compact fluorescent bulb from the base and I powered it through 12 volts using a fluorescent tube drive circuit. Now I recently released a video showing how to make a fluorescent tube drive circuit. So if you're interested be sure to check that out. Now the light you're looking at here is for my bathroom. I made it out of four 10 millimeter ultra bright LEDs. Two of them together in series with a 220 ohm resistor. Light output is excellent. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you for watching.